Hi, my name's Tanya and I wanted to do a little guided meditation. I know a lot of us are um, finding things challenging at this time and how can we centre ourselves in the midst of what feels like really chaotic events. When I tune into fear myself and of what is potentially unfolding, it feels like there's a tsunami coming and I was listening to um, or reading Dr. David Hamilton the other day and he's this great guy, he's a kind of spiritual guy that's also a doctor so I really enjoy his balance of both worlds and I've been feeling for a while it's like a tsunami and then I read him saying that and you know he was saying like we're still on the beach and there's tsunami coming and we need to get off the beach and we need to get home and I've been feeling panicky about it and I've really been limiting my news sort of reading to a little bit a quick look, look in the morning and a quick look in the evening um, and the same with Facebook um, because there is so much fear going around so I, for a while I took myself off both and then I realised I wasn't being present with what is in the world and for me personally um, I don't want to kind of go into a place of avoidance we are where we are things are unfolding and these are our brothers and sisters around the world that are suffering so being informed to a certain extent but then coming back home to myself is very um, important for me, for my family, for the work that I do. So with that in mind um, I just wanted to create a little space here where we could gather and gather ourselves um, it can feel like a time of chaos at the moment um, it feels like things are out of our control and things are out of our control things were never in our control anyway um, but we kind of in the western world especially think that if we do certain things we can protect ourselves and now we're realising that we're all human beings and we're all in this and there is suffering and you know nobody's immune from it so it's a time to bring ourselves from the outside world back into our hearts into ourselves, into our being noticing what's arising for us noticing what is on ground in us keeping our hearts open even though we want to run to this place of fear and hide and defend and protect and it will bring up a lot of emotions in people anger you know it's kind of the stages of grief really um, because there's so much even if we're not experiencing the physical grief of losing somebody, we are experiencing, it, it can feel like a loss of freedom, um, loss of power, a loss of autonomy, a loss of our lives, you know. Um, and so with grief, there are the different stages of denial, um, anger, depression, there's a few more, there's seven. My brain's not working this morning. Um, well, acceptance is the end one. And it's okay for us to not be in a place of acceptance. We are where we are. And it's okay for whatever is arising for us to arise. But I think the important thing is to not get pulled under by it and so for me personally um, I've always worked very metaphysically so 
for me um, this outbreak affects our respiratory system, our respiratory system for me in the metaphysical way of looking at things is our heart chakra and um, in Chinese medicine grief is what sits on the lungs and um, so for me when I'm feeling any emotions I'm letting them wherever possible be I'm, I'm kind of allowing these feelings to just go with me and I and I and I allow it to flow through me and it's not always easy to do that because I have a little four-year-old and I feel myself getting upset thinking about it I am asleep I don't want his world to be completely sort of torn asunder more than it already kind of is so I am just taking myself off to the toilet and having a little cry um, or finding some space in my treatment room where I am now and allowing these emotions to flow through me and what I'm finding is that when I do that, when I'm more where I am with what is arising, like the waves, the waves come and then they go again and then I feel calmer and present and for me it's the kindest thing I can be doing for myself as a highly sensitive person and an empath, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm feeling it. I don't want to kind of stuff emotions down um, and I encourage you wherever you are to give yourself some space to feel what you're feeling um, to meet whatever is arising and I'm going to be doing some EFT videos not today but and this can help us it's a tool to help us work with our stuff whatever is arising um, yeah try and feel what you're feeling whatever it is try and feel it but kind of don't don't let it pull you under all the time don't kind of let it become your reality that fear I feel the fear it arises in me and then I kind of give myself a little bit of you know let my ego let my head just go into that fearful place and then I notice what's going on ah, okay I'm in a place of fear and I bring myself back and it's not always easy to do that um, but the only kind of real power we have is how we respond to things and how we take care of ourselves so there's a um, an, an amazing being that I um, follow is, I don't know if it's the right word or not but uh, she's called Amma and she's the hugging saint and um, Thankfully, as part of the group I'm in of, of healers, the Vortex Healing Group, they, there's a lot of them that are very connected to her energy and they spend time at her ashram in India and um, I'm nowhere near as kind of involved as a lot of them are with her, but um, I really enjoy seeing their pulse and the ones that are at the ashram and feeling that energy. And she said that at this time, it's a time of kind of, doing the next right best thing and also a time of prayer and grace so um, that means be practical do whatever we need to do we do what we're being advised to do which is to kind of keep safe keep um, you know protect ourselves protect others and kind of tend to our inner worlds and also to pray um, and now I'm not like a organized religious person at all but I am spiritual and I find some comfort in the idea of words that have some power and some meaning to them so I'm, I'm just going to read what the words are and I'll write them on my um, video as well on the write up um, so she's asking people to say these words and and I'll say the English meaning of them as well, but to take some time each day. So the words are Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. And ending with Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. And what does it mean? So it means may all beings everywhere be happy and free. 
and may the thoughts, words and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and to that freedom for all. And what does Om Shanti mean? Well, when we repeat it, it's kind of peace in mind, peace in speech and peace in body. Um, so this is a Sanskrit prayer and, and what it's doing is kind of pulling us out of our story about us and how hard things are for us and, and it's okay to feel how hard things are for us. It's, I'm not saying we don't do that, but it's opening our hearts to all beings everywhere because we are part of this collective of all beings everywhere. And if we can move into our hearts and breathe in this suffering and breathe out this love and breathe in this love and breathe out this suffering and just kind of be present. We're, we're, we're changing our sort of energy state really, we're changing our vibration and it's a kinder headspace to be in than the house is on fire, I, there's nowhere for me to go to, what's going to happen to us all and all of that stuff I definitely give space for um, in EFT um, and in talking therapies it's important to feel what you feel and it's also important to honour yourselves and your headspace at this time and your hearts and find whatever you can that brings you comfort, that helps you feel connected to one another rather than in competition and that helps us to remember that we're all one and that we're stronger together. So I'm hoping this, this may not happen because I've only just thought of it. Is um, my husband's a singer, and he has a really beautiful voice. He's also a scientist and not really the most spiritual person, but um, he kind of is in his own way. So I'm really hoping that at some point I'm going to be able to record him singing those words, the Sanskrit prayer, because I think it will be beautiful. Um, but I am now going to sing it, and I I'm not a singer, so. It's just to kind of give you a melody, if we can call it a melody, to use these words to. And I'm laughing because I'm feeling quite nervous because this is well out of my comfort zone, but hey ho, that's what comfort zones are for getting out of. Om Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Om Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Om Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Thank you for listening and stay well, stay healthy, stay in your hearts. Namaste.